Hello and welcome, my name's Steve Woody and this is a complete beginner's guide to the game Icarus. If you've never played this game before, Icarus is a PvE style base building, survival, crafting type uh, of a resource gathering game. Uh, there's a lot to do, it's very deep, the tech and skill trees are insane, the developers are very active, they update the game quite a lot. And there's a good story to it as well. So I think you might enjoy it. We're going to jump straight into it. I don't want to waste your time. I want to be respectful. So we're going to do a series. Each video in the series is going to be a new mission. We'll talk about those. We'll go through those. But this initial video, I want to just go through the basic settings. Uh, we're going to spend about 30 minutes per video, hopefully. Maybe a bit longer. Depends on the missions. We're going to play it in real time with no editing so that you can see it as it is. And you can experience the game. Uh, and we'll take you through this. Um, okay, so in... In a nutshell, the concept of the game is that Icarus is a planet, it was terraformed, uh, and it went wrong. It was known as humanity's greatest mistake, and they abandoned the planet. But there's these rare exotic material, which are known as exotics, and they're very valuable. And so now people are going back to the planet to try and harvest these resources. And these people are known as prospectors. That's what you are. So you're going to go to the planet, you're going to take a contract from the government or from these corporations, and you're going to try and... Uh, and do this now there are missions which are kind of like the story mode or there's like an open persistent world where you can just go and build and explore and do what you want um, but when you start the first thing you're going to do is click on play when you do that you're going to have to create your character uh, now i'm just going to go as standard but you can customize this if you want to uh, once this is done you're going to confirm your character and it's going to bring it into the home screen so let me just talk about this very briefly top left is your character level your name and your currency there are two currencies. There's Ren, which is the main currency, and there's the Exotics. These are Exotics, okay? And the only way you can earn Ren and Exotics is through doing missions. So if I was to click on New, I can go into the Open World, which is a persistent survival experience. So you just choose your drop point where you want to go. Uh, you build your base, and you just go about your day. You battle enemies and the weather, and you just build up, and you can come out and go in as much as you want. And it's persistent. Now... You can do that on the game server, or you can have a dedicated server, you can mod the game. There's a lot that you can do customization-wise in the game, but that's the open world. And everything you do to level up your character in the game is represented when you go into the missions and the other way around. Everything you do in the missions is represented in the open world. Uh, Outpost we're not going to focus on, but it's kind of risk-free. It's a smaller version of the open world, but there's no, uh, there's no storms, there's, there's no uh, enemies or no animals. But you get less XP as a result. And I don't really bother with that, but you might. And then missions. If I click on missions, you'll see there are currently two uh, territories or two locations, which is Olympus and Styx. Um, and there's a third one that will be coming out next week with a new Frontiers update. So I kind of want to get you ready for this because I feel like there's going to be a lot of new players coming into this game. So I feel like now's a good time to start from the beginning. So all I'm going to do right now is talk about these icons, uh, these menu icons at the top. And that is your loadout. This is what you can drop down. So you start in an orbital station above the planet, above, above Icarus. And you drop down in a dropship to Icarus. Do your mission or whatever you're going to do. And then you take off again. And that's how this game works. So when you're in the orbital station, you can go to the workshop. And here you can unlock things like environment suits, armors, um, axes, pickaxes, weapons, etc. So you can unlock these. Now they have a research cost and a crafting cost. And here you can see that this, uh, this pickaxe, for example, has a 35 melee damage, gives you a plus 55 mining radius and 115% yield from mining. But it costs 75 ren to be able to research this and another 25 ren to purchase it. So once you've unlocked and purchased your uh, items in your workshop, you can then put them into your loadout and take them down onto the planet with you. Uh, you don't have to, you can go down completely naked, it's absolutely fine. You're given a basic suit. Uh, and when you drop down on a planet, you'll have to gather and, and do all of that stuff um, to be able to get what you need to survive. And that's that's kind of the core game loop. You play games like Rust or uh, some other games like Ark or anything like that, you'll know that they do server wipes. And server wipes every month or however often uh, bi-monthly kind of wipe the environment back to fresh. Well, this does it via missions and a mission timer. So when you go into a mission, there'll be a timer of like maybe 1, 7, 15 or 30 days. And after that, it'll wipe. So every time you go back down, you're starting fresh with, with nothing. And the only thing you can take down with you is your loadout. So you want to bear that in mind as you're building out your loadouts and your workshop and unlocking things. And the only way you can get this currency is through the missions. 
So let's have a quick look at talent. Uh, if I click on the left hand side here on talent, you'll see here I've got no points available at the moment. Um, but there are survival, adventure, habitation and combat. Uh, so survival is broken down into resources, hunting and cooking or farming. So for example in resources here, if I put one point in this talent, I'll get plus 5% yield from felling trees. And if I go for this one, I'll get plus 10% yield from mining stones. All the way down to the sort of the, the some of the bottom ones here, this will give me an extra active food buff. So there's like lots of extra little things that you can get and you can do in this game. Adventure is broken into exploration, husbandry and fishing. Habitation is repairing tools and building. And combat is bows, spears, blades or firearms. So there's a lot that you can do in this game. It's very, very deep. And you can also uh, spend some uh, exotics and some rent to respec your points. There's not enough points to be able to unlock everything. So you have to choose very carefully what you want to focus on. There's multiple people playing. Maybe some of you will have different roles within the game. You can also play it as a solo player. And there are solo skill trees. So if you're not playing with another person, this boost is kind of meant to make it a little bit easier for you if you're playing that you don't have to struggle and there's some really powerful boosts here like increased stamina increased speed increased health increased damage etc etc if you come back to the main menu we then have a tech tree and this tech tree is is brilliant it's a really good tech tree so you'll start off we've crafted our character so we've done that uh, that means that we can uh, build a wood pile a stone pile we have a stone axe and a stone pickaxe and that's it we have to level up our character to get more points to be able to unlock things like knives, campfires, um, base, basic bandages, bows and arrows, uh, all the way across even to things like building sets to be able to do your base building. You'll need to unlock those. So you have to pick your blueprint points very carefully to be able to make sure, and we'll go through this in the videos, but to make sure that you can progress. So tier one is all of the basic items. Tier two is really around crafting. So you get a crafting bench and then this allows you to do things like reservoirs. It allows you to do things like radios, cooking stations, skinning benches. You can start to do, um, if you want to do planting and things like that, you can do farming, fishing, uh, and as well as other things like uh, you can do masonry, which allows you to do stone building uh, and you can do carpentry as well. So. Um, a lot of things you can do even down to like trophies and things like that uh, you can get a textile bench which allow you to do um, uh, uh, animal mounts uh, so you can actually tame animals and ride them in the game tier 3 goes into the machining bench which allows you to go into um, bigger and better items that uh, you can then go into concrete and cement mixers so you can start to do that and biofuel uh, and that kind of leads towards uh, the, the later stage here where you can actually get into glasswork uh, and a lot of other things like advanced masonry and things like that. And you go into tier four, you can do the fabricator and that leads you into electricity where you'll have the water wheel, solar panel, and then you can start to do electric, advanced things, uh, chemistry, etc, etc. Now, even down to things like the marble kitchen table and the plumbed sink, you can really start to design your base. There's actually uh, downloadable content, which is uh, expansion packs that you can get to get extensions for this. There's a lot to this game, a lot to this game. And to get to that level, um, it takes a lot of work. So we're going to go through that in this video series. That's kind of the basics and everything you need to know. We're only going to focus on missions because I think that's all that you need to do. You don't need to do the open world, not to start with. In fact, I would recommend avoiding the open world for now. Later, as the game develops, the developers have already said that you'll be able to launch your missions from the open world. And coming from next week, you'll be able to do that within the new world. But for the initial worlds, for Olympus, which we're going to look at now, Olympus and Styx, these ones, unfortunately, you have to do these separate. So at the moment, I would just focus on these missions. And if you're going to start, Olympus is the first, first cohort. It's known as Ground Zero. Uh, and this is like an Earth-like terror zone, which is centered on mountainous Arctic regions. You've got the forest, you've got the rivers, you've got the Arctic biome. Uh, you've also got a desert biome that's there. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a relaxed, you know, there are some enemies. There's some the bears and things that you'll have to fight. But overall, wolves and bears are the worst things to deal with. The rest of it's not really that bad. Um, Styx is a lot more dangerous. There's uh, bit bigger and better storms, bigger and better animals to fight. And as you progress through the, the story, uh, the creatures become more and more alien. 
uh, the storms become a little bit more crazy and the regions as well. And you'll start to realize this as it becomes less Earth-like the more you get into this, uh, this, this lore. So for the purpose of this video, we're actually going to Olympus. And we're going to look at this uh, mission select. As you can see, everything's locked right now. We can't do anything. So we need to start on mission one, which is going to be Beachhead Recon. You can see here it's got one difficulty. We need tech one, uh, tier one tech. And it got, we've got seven days, which is real days. We've got seven real days to complete this mission. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Icarus, friend. UDA says we got to drop you in a safe, well-mapped zone your first time down. They must have been thinking of some other planet. You'll see for yourself soon enough. There's a ways to go before you head out hunting for exotics. Right now, it's about learning to survive on the surface. So head down, take a look around, then we'll talk. All right, that's it. So that's our introduction. You can see here it says our objective is to recon the Vorisone. We can choose our easy, medium or hard settings, which will change the modifiers if we do that. But it will also change the rewards. And we can go into a hardcore mode as well, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go for normal and we're going to go ahead and claim our prospect. So claiming a prospect means you're claiming this um, this mission. Uh, we can go down and then we can close the prospect when we finish. The prospect is basically the contract. So we're going to go ahead. We've got no items. This is from your loadout. So from the workshop to the loadout, there's nothing here. So we're just going to confirm our loadout and get started. And you can also play with Steam friends or private. Hopefully they'll fix and improve this later. But for now, the only way you can play with other people is you have to do it via Steam and do the invite via the join options. We're just going to go ahead and get started. So we have seven days to complete this. We're going to drop down now from the orbital station and we're going to get started and we're going to follow the mission objectives. And the missions are kind of geared to get you used to the game, to introduce you to new things as we go. So uh, for this first mission, uh, we'll, we'll just walk through. We'll do it together. Uh, we'll show you what you need to do. And then in all of the other videos, again, we'll show you what you need to do to complete the missions and hopefully guide you through this game. All right, so we're landing at the moment in our dropship, and we can see here on the dashboard, if we look at the top, we've got our compass with our mission timer. Top right is the environment conditions, temperature, weather, etc. On the left is our mission objectives. Bottom is our hotbar. Bottom right is our icons, items. And bottom left is our stats and our health. Welcome to Icarus, friend. Looks like your first time down here. Call me Sol. Looks like paradise. But don't be fooled. The air is poison. Wildlife's out to kill you. And the weather's like nothing you've ever seen. You'll need to make yourself some shelter soon enough. But you know what you're doing, right? That's why you came all the way out here and dropped with nothing. Because you could. Well, UDA wants you to show you understand the basics before they send you anywhere really dangerous. So get acquainted, then head back up when you're ready. Best of luck, friend. Stay safe. All right. So that's it. We're kind of left on our own now. Now, when you drop, you're going to drop in a random location. If I press M, it will bring up the map and you'll be able to see this grid. So this is the, the current grid of where we are at the moment on Icarus. And you might have storms, you might have um, wildlife that comes. And so we'll talk about all of that as we encounter it. But the first thing you need to do is hunt, gather and craft. Okay, so let's start with gathering. Uh, and there's a storm right away. So we've got a shower that's coming. We're going to ignore that for now. We'll be okay. But just bear in mind, this, this is all RNG. So... We're going to go ahead and click these ferns. These ferns are going to give us fibers. So you press uh, F and we can harvest these. So we're going to go ahead and just press F and harvest some of these ferns. And we're going to go up to these sticks on the ground and we can click sticks as well. And these are stones. So sticks, stones and ferns are your three basic resources that you'll be able to gather in abundance pretty much anywhere whenever you land. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to do that and nothing else. We're just going to grab some stones, grab some sticks, 
uh, and just grab a few of these items. And then when we're ready, we're going to press the O key. And the O key is going to open up our crafting menu. So in our crafting menu, we can craft some basic materials. But we're going to go with a stone axe. So we're going to click on it. If we've got the resources, which is fiber, sticks, and stone, we're going to go ahead and craft that. And we're going to do for the same for the stone pickaxe. All right. So now we've got an axe. Here it is. And there's a baby deer there, look. But it's seen us and run away. So now we've got this axe and we've also got this pickaxe. So now what we can do is we can continue on our way. And every time we pick something up, we're getting experience. You can see that at the top left, we're gaining experience. If I was to hit this stone, I'll actually gather stone. And again, it's going to help me with my experience. So there's lots and lots of things you can do to gain experience and to level up. And this is one of the things you're going to want to do to get started, is level up. So we're just going to collect this stuff, gather this stone. And the other thing that we can do is we can chop down a tree. So get our axe, chop down a tree. Just be careful when it falls. Uh, just depend on what way it falls. Don't be underneath it because you will get a concussion. And then once the tree has fallen, you can then chop it. So when you chop it, the first thing you'll do is you'll strip off the branches. So if I chop it here... There you go, the branches have gone. Do the same thing again. The branches have gone. If I continue to hit it, it will break. There we go, so it's now broken into a log. And if I continue to hit it again, it will break down into wood that I can then collect. So I've now got wood. And I'm also getting experience. You get 300 experience for felling a tree, and you get more experience every time you break it. So another 100 for chopping it. So we're just gonna do this, chop a couple of trees. Very basic, very easy. And this should be enough to get us to level 1. Which is all we need to do at the moment. Just get to level 1. Alright, so. Just do this tree here. We've also got lots of wood now. And lots of stone. Alright. Now you don't need to gather everything. You're not going to be able to take it with you. When you finish your mission, you'll go back up to the space station. But you cannot take anything with you. And when you close this prospect, you won't be able to access it again. So just bear that in mind. Unless you're in a persistent world, it's not worth doing this. Like, it's not worth keeping things. You just want to do the mission and get out. Uh, you don't want to spend more time than you need. So, we've done this at the moment. Good work, and we've leveled up. With new skills come new possibilities. What you do with that knowledge, well, that's up to you. No point picking up a hammer if you don't know what you're making. Before you build... You gotta learn how. Yep. And so to do that, we need to open up the tech tree. So if we come back into our menu, I'm going to start at the beginning. This is our inventory. Shows us our level, our items. We can see our oxygen, our food, our water. We can see our weight. Any buffs or debuffs. Because we're in a storm at the moment, we have medium exposure, which means we're getting a minus 30% movement speed and a minus 10% experience gained. We can see our armor. Head, chest, legs, feet and arms. And also any backpacks. And we can also see all of our stats. What damage we do, what our health is. And this is detailed. And when I say detailed, I mean it is very, very detailed. There are so many different stats, buffs, debuffs, things that we can do here. So, yeah, enjoy that. For all of you, you data analytical nerds out there, you'll love that. There's a lot to go through. Crafting, we've already talked about. Basic items that we can craft at the moment is a axe and pickaxe, the wood pile, the stone pile, and a couple of other items here. If I go to the tech tree, now I have four points available because I got to level one. So the first things that we're going to want to do, the first things we're going to want to do is we want to craft a stone knife. This is one of the first things you should unlock. Now, if I come out and go back into my crafting menu, I can now craft a stone knife. And when you come onto the planet, I recommend the first thing you always do is craft two stone knives. The reason I recommend two is because it is a great defensive item to fight wolves and things that could attack you. And if you're in the middle of a fight and you break your item, you've got another one you can select. There's nothing worse than being in a fight and finding out that your item breaks and you're panicking trying to repair your item. So just bear that in mind that it's really good to be able to... Um, stab things but it's also good to be able to change if one breaks 
All right. So with that being said, we're going to come back into the tech tree again. And we've got our stone knife. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do, and this is actually part of our menu, it says we need to unlock the wood rag torch. This is what it is telling us to unlock. So we're going to do this because it's part of our mission. And once we've done that, it then says we need to unlock it and craft it. So back into the crafting menu, and we can see we need some more fiber. Well, we know that we can get that simply by collecting these bushes. So we're going to gather a few more bushes into the crafting menu, and we're going to make a wood rag torch. Perfect. Now, the torch is on your L key. So I can press L, and I will turn my torch on and off. And you can see that here. It's dark, and it lights the area up. It's really good for nighttime. So you have day and night cycles here, and the different biomes have different weather conditions. So all of your items are hotkeys. One, two, three, four, all the way through to zero. Anything that is to do with a mission will be in the G slot, and anything to do with a light or a torch will be in the L slot. And if I press I for my inventory, I can see these. I can drag them, move them about, etc. I can also right-click on these to either repair them, drop them, or destroy them. Repairing normally costs something, for example, on a stone knife. I need one stone to repair it. All right, so that's the basics. We now know how to craft a weapon. We know how to craft our basic items. We now need to build a shelter and craft a bedroll to survive. Well, in order to craft a bedroll, we're going to go back to our tech tree because we need leather. And the way that we're going to get uh, leather and fur and things like that is through animals. And the best way to do that is with a bow and an arrow. So we're going to craft a bow and arrow. So we have our knife, we have a bow and arrow, and we have our wood rag torch. All right, and here comes a wolf right now. Now, a wolf will look until a certain point, and you can see that eye icon above its head. Once that icon fills up, it's alerted by us. As soon as it's alerted, that will turn red, and it will then attack us. You can see it now attacking us. So we have to now attack this, and that is why a knife is so important. You might end up with a wolf the second you drop off, so you want to get a knife as quickly as you possibly can. Once you've got a knife... Uh, there's the more you can do. So I can pick this wolf up by pressing and holding F. I can move it around. I can kind of bring it back over here. Now this wolf is going to alert other wolves. If there's anything local, this wolf is going to be around. So um, I actually can't drop this item because I've unbound the key. So I'm going to go into my settings. You will not have to do this. Um, but I need to do this because I was playing about with my settings or my keys. So lots and lots of settings here that you can see. Uh, if you've got stuff that you need to be able to change and move. I need to be able to drop my item. So just bear with me a second while I do that. There we go. All right. So for you, I think it will be the Q key. So I can press to hold to carry this or I can drop it. If I select my knife, I can hold to skin it. So now I can skin this animal. Now doing this is going to give me, here we go. I've got some leather, some fur, some bone, some raw meat. And luckily I got some stringy meat, which is prime meat. I wouldn't normally get this. So I can take all of that. And now I've left this animal remains. I can now take an item and I can hit the bones and I'm going to gather the bones. So now I'm gathering bones as well. So there we go. I've just taken that animal and I've just harvested it for everything that it had. And that's also going to help me to level up. So now I can have a look around. I don't have to go too far, but I can collect some ferns. I can chop down some trees and I can hunt some animals. Now, the thing you need to know about animals in this game, uh, I'm just going to go to crafting and make myself a bow. And now I'm going to make myself as many stone arrows as I can. Now, the reason I can't make more stone arrows is because I need more stone. So I can simply do that by walking over here, hitting this stone, and then I'll be able to craft some more arrows. So the way that animals work in this game is they have a radius. Now, some animals have a small radius, some have a large radius. As soon as you are either in uh, audio or visual range, because the noise that you make and also the um, being, a, being, being seen as well, causes them to be alert or triggered. Now, depending on what the animal is, depends on how it reacts. If it's a deer, for example, the deer will be startled and the deer will run away. So will the rabbit, so will other docile creatures. But if it is a wolf or a bear, 
it will become aggressive and attack you. So there are friendly and aggressive animals and you need to understand what it is you're dealing with, which is why I recommend having a knife available to you. So we can hear an animal now. So I can get my bow and arrow out and I can walk over here. Now if I press the left control, I go into a stealth mode. Stealth mode allows me to get a lot closer without being noticed. And this is also something that you can upgrade later with skills. And there we go, I can see a deer up there in the distance. So I can creep up to this deer. I can see the deer and its, and its baby. I can walk up to these and creep up to these. And if I don't get noticed, I should be able to kill them. So this is how we're going to hunt in this game, uh, in stealth mode. Try not to alert them or cause any uh, distress as we get closer. And we're going to try and see if we can hit them. Now in stealth mode, you do more damage when you hit them. And if you get a headshot, you do even more damage still. So there they are. We see them over here. So we're going to aim. It's just gone left to right. Now, as soon as they see us, they're going to run away and get spooked. So we're going to try and get close enough without them seeing us, without them being spooked. And I don't think that's going to work because it looks like they've run off. So we're going to keep looking, see if we can find Before something else. Before you start building, you need to hydrate. There's a lake down there. Go take a drink. Even a basic Enviro suit will filter out anything dangerous. Okay, so I can press M on my map and I can see where there is a lake here. So I can... If I double left click, I will set a cursor. Wow, well, look, there we go. There was a baby deer that just run through. So I can now see on my compass at the top there, that red dot, which is the lake. So I can head down to this. And we can see there are three things that I need here. There's food, there's water, and there's oxygen. These are the things you need to survive. Basic things as well as your health. So in order to get food, well, that's easy. We can either harvest the land. Uh, if we run around, you're going to see either things on the floor that you can pick up. Uh, and I did see something over here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, there's like melons and carrots and all kinds of things that you'll see on the floor as you walk around. So here, these are watermelons. I can pick this up. I can go to my inventory. I can right click to consume this and here it's going to give me food. Zone, the water is pretty clean. Fish don't seem to mind it. Okay, here we go. Here's an animal. And there we go. So I got a headshot. I killed that animal with my bow. I can clip my bow back and I can skin it. And this is how we hunt. So now we know how to hunt with a bow and arrow and a knife. We can collect our resources here. We can also, as I mentioned before, uh, we can hit the bones. Now the reason I'm hitting the bones with a pickaxe and not a knife is because I don't want to damage the knife. There's a wolf here. So I'm going to have to fight this wolf. Now look, he's going to see us. There we go, he's alert. And now he's seen us, he's going to run towards us and we're going to stab him in the head. Stab him in the head, nice and easy. You have to keep an eye on your knife's durability. You can see that little bar underneath the item. So, we're going to keep an eye on that. And we're going to skin him again and get the bones. Now you can also see the wolf carcass, you can see the durability and the decay there. Everything will decay, if you leave it, it will decay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on here, repair these. It's going to use a little bit of stone. And we can also see our meat. If I put it in here, you'll see there's a little bar here that's ticking down. This is the decay bar. So everything will decay in time. And if you don't use it, oh, you'll lose it. It'll turn to rotten meat and then it will spoil. So you have to be able to cook the meat. Later on, you'll be able to preserve the meat. There's stuff that you can do. Uh, we'll go into that later, um, but this is a, a very detailed game, so just bear that in mind. So we're not going to collect anything else at the moment. We're going to go down to the water, and we're going to take a quick drink. And now we know how to hydrate. It's as simple as that. We've now hydrated, and if we look, we can see here we've got a watermelon buff, which gives us plus 50 stamina, minus 10 water consumption. We're cooling down because we've had a drink. Uh, if we go into the water, we'll get wet. We'll then get a wet uh, buff as well. Uh, so here we go, we can see this wet buff now. So minus 10 degrees to our temperature. And we can see in the bottom left hand corner our temperature, whether it's cold or hot. And we have to bear that in mind as well to be able to survive. So we're just going to have a quick look around. And the next thing we're going to look for is a blue rock. A blue rock. And there's one just here. 
Now there's two things you can do here. There's either going to be some blue rocks on the floor, like the stones that we saw, and you can pick those up, or we're going to get our pickaxe and we're going to hit this, which is called Oxite. Now this is important because food we can find on the floor or we can hunt animals, and then later on you'll be able to grow it in your farm. Water we can get from lakes, and later we'll be able to capture it through reservoirs and things. And for oxygen, you'll need to mine these stones. Now you can either pick them up off the floor if you see them, or you can harvest these. And this will give you a material called oxide. Now oxide is something you can consume, and that will give you oxygen. So if we go to our inventory, if I right click and then consume this, I will get a little bit of oxygen. Now, it's going to take quite a long time to be able to do that. And so I could just consume the whole stack. But another thing I can do, because my suit has a slot in oxygen, I can just drag this across and drop it here. And now this will start to go down, and this will start to go up. And it will tick through, and you'll see this is now going down, and my oxygen level is going up. And that holds 50 oxide. So I can just put a stack of oxide into there, and that will keep my oxygen up. So now I can eat to get my food up. I can drink to get my water up. And I can put oxide in here to get my oxygen up. There's the three things I need to survive. So let's go back to the tech tree. Because the next thing I'm going to need is a campfire. I need a campfire for two reasons. One, I need it to cook. And two, it allows me to unlock the bedroll, which is required for this mission. So campfire and bedroll. So let's have a look at those. If we go to our crafting screen, a campfire is going to require fiber, sticks and stones. We don't have enough stones, so let's go and hit some. Alright, now that we have enough, we can craft this. And then once it's crafted, we can put it down. So, you can see this bar filling up. This is now crafted. We can put this into our hot bar. Oh, here's a wolf, so we're going to run up to this wolf. Just poke him in the head with a knife. And then we're going to skin him. And the reason we're doing this, wolves are really easy. They're actually quite good to be able to kill because wolves, um, they give you quite a bit of fur. And also, deer, they'll run away from you. And it can be quite hard to hit a deer, especially if you're not good with a bow and arrow. It might be easier just to target some wolves, have a couple of knives on you. And that's going to help you because, look, I need leather and fur to be able to make my bedroll. And getting fur early on can be quite difficult. So you're going to want these wolves to help you to get that fur to be able to craft your bedroll. Animals are normally around water pools, so around the lake you'll find some. And different animals spawn in different areas. So there we go, for example, we can see there, this is an alert uh, deer that's just run off. Very little chance of us actually catching that. Alright, so we're going to put our fire pit down here. So we're just going to aim down and click. Alright, left click and that's dropped and now we can press F to interact. So the way this works is the top left here we can see our recipes. So if we put meat in we'll get cooked meat. If we put in ice we'll get water. If we put in rotten meat we'll get charcoal. I did hear something but it's okay. So they're the recipes in the top left and we can scroll down there's quite a lot of recipes. So what we can do now is put this into the inventory of the item here. So we're going to put in this gamey meat across here. And we've also got some raw meat. And we've got some stringy meat, so we can put that into here. And also, look, we've got two spoiled meat, because they spoiled. And then we can put something in. Now, the fuel type that it requires, we can put in fiber, which we've got here. And if we activate the fire, look how quickly this fiber goes down. So let's change this for sticks. Now look at sticks, it goes down a lot slower. We could also change it for wood. And look how slowly the fuel consumption goes down with wood. So we can have fiber, sticks, refined wood, wood, coal, um, or, or comet coal. That's the type of fuel we can put in. And it will go down slower uh, depending on what we use. So now this is going to cook. Once it's cooked, we will then have some cooked meat here. I can now consume this, and that's going to fix my hunger. But also, if I go into my inventory, I've now got a bonus. 100 maximum stamina, 150 maximum health. 20 health regeneration per minute and plus 5 experience gain. So food is a very, very good way to be able to get buffs and uh, improvements uh, early on in this game. It helps you to recover your health until you get potions later on and 
uh, you can unlock the uh, the bench to be able to do that. And it's a good way to be able to survive. The difference between surviving in a fight can really come down to having food on you. Alright, so a bit of a shot through the bush there, but there we go. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to see your kill. So you might need to use your torch. Now, all we're trying to do is get this fur that we need. I can hear something. I don't know what that is, but there's another animal here. I can hear something over here as well. So we're going to use the audio cues. So that's a rabbit. Oh, we got it. So there's the blue rocks that we talked about, the oxide that's uh, loose on the ground. We're going to pick that up. Again, it might be easier for you at the start, if you're not very good with a bow and arrow, to be able to go and find wolves. Um, you'll be able to find them, but we're almost there. We're not going to get the bones anymore. We don't really need them. We are going to repair our tool. Right click, click on repair. Always make sure our tools are repaired. And we're just going to run around. Doesn't matter where we go. We want to stay quite close to our ship, because we will need to go back there in a bit. So we're not going to go too far and explore. Oh, there we go. We can see another... That nice deer. I don't feel good about that. It is what it is. Sorry, Bambi. But if you're crouched down um, with a low-level animal, you'll be able to get them with a headshot every time. All right, so now we've got what we need. We can come back to crafting, and we can now craft a bedroll. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. And now we're going to come back down. Doesn't really matter where we go. We're just going to walk around. If I press O and come to the tech tree, I've still got one point available. Now, that one point can be used to make a thatch building base set. A thatch building base set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. That's my last point on level two. And now if I press O, I can now craft a door, a wall, and a floor. So I'm going to make two uh, floors. I'm going to make four walls, and I'm going to make a door. For that, I need a lot more thatch. So collecting fiber, just collecting them from these bushes. Very nice and easy. Just walking around. And I'm just going to keep holding down this F key as I do this. Walking around and grabbing as much of these as I can. Perfect. Nice and easy to be able to do. So if I press M, I can see where my ship is. I can head back towards my ship. And all the way there, I can just hold down the F key. And I'm going to automatically pick up anything that's in front of me as I run. So a good tip here to be able to gain experience and also some resources as you're moving. Now keep an eye on your stamina. Try not to let your stamina run out completely. Just in case you get attacked and need to defend yourself. Like here, there's a wolf. If I had no stamina, I wouldn't be able to fight this wolf. Uh, as a result, I was okay. Always keep some stamina and always have two weapons. There we go. So I've leveled up. I'm now level three. Uh, but I've done everything I need to do at the moment. So we're going to head back towards the ship. And it says here I need to build a shelter and craft a bedroll in order to survive the harsh environment. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm just going to clear a little space here. And for this mission, we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to craft two thatch floors. We're going to craft four walls. And we're going to craft a door. All right, we're going to put these into our hot bar. So we're just going to drag them down. There we go. So there we've got our floor. We've got our walls. And in a moment, we'll also have our door. So we can see our crafting queue here. Now that's done. Uh, we can build our base. So we'll press key 6. And now we get this building option. So we're just going to place the floor down. When you're placing, uh, I'll do this with a wall. You'll see a yellow arrow. This shows you the way uh, that is outside. So this is the outside of the wall. And this is the inside of the wall. If I hover over, you'll see here this is blue. The blue means it is on the ground. This is the, the most solid a structure can be is blue. After this, it will be green, then it will go into sort of yellow, amber, red, uh, and the weaker a structure becomes, the more chance you have of that structure falling down. So for example, if I was to just keep building up and up and up, uh, I get to a point and it will just, it will break and it will fall down. So just bear that in mind when you're building structures. 
Something you can do when you're building is you can build these thatched beams. So I'll just build a few of these to also show you. Thatched beams allow you to provide additional uh, stability. Uh, so I can put in from the ground here, I can put this in here. If I hold down the R key, I'll also get this menu. So I can not only build one there, I can actually build one horizontally here as well. And if I wanted to, I can also build them diagonally as well. So for example, like this. So you can start to build a foundation and that foundation you'll be able to see is going to be a certain color. So this one's actually yellow. Uh, this one you can see here is going to be green. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these walls up. So I'm going to put a wall here. And if I hold down the R key, I can change this to put a window down if I want to. I can hold down the R key and I can put down a door frame if I want to. So here we go. We can see this little base that I've built here. Press 6 and I can put another floor panel down, which will be a roof. And then I press 8 and I can now put the door down, which snaps into place. And here we go. We have a little base. A little one by one square. Now any animals that come into this area, any aggressive animals, will start to attack this base. And also weather can affect this base. If there is a storm, it could be a higher wind. Trees could fall down on the base. Um, if it's a, a lightning storm, uh, this, this base could catch fire. Uh, if you run through a fire, or if, a, if even worse, if you have a fire outside and a wolf runs through the fire, the wolf will catch fire. And if the wolf runs into your base, it can, it can burn your base down. So just bear those things in mind as you're playing this game. We're going to put our bedroll down. How you build, that's up to you. Yep. So long as you learn the basics, your chances are the same as anyone else. And I get paid. There we go. So now we've put this down. If you want to set this as a spawn point, you need to press and hold F. That's it. So this is now a spawn point. That means if I die, as long as that bed is in shelter, I can respawn here. I can also sleep through the night, but it must be in a shelter. What that means is if there's a storm and this house breaks down, I will not be able to respawn on this bed. It has to be in a shelter. And that's kind of it at the moment. That's all we need to do for this mission. We've hunted, we've gathered, uh, we've crafted, we've done all of the things that we need to do. And so all it says now is we need to interact uh, and launch our dropship to complete the mission. Now, it actually says hunt, gather and craft. So I don't think it's going to class it yet as being complete. Uh, you'll have to hunt a little bit more, maybe gather a little bit more, just until it's happy with what you need to do. Um, so just go around, make sure you're, you're gathering, you're hunting and you're crafting. So we'll go ahead and uh, build a bit of a bigger base. So another floor panel, maybe another, another three wall panels here. Put this down. And there we go, we've now finished. So just needed a little bit more on the crafting side of things for it to count. Now that that's done uh, and we've finished, we've hunted, gathered and crafted. We've gathered stick stones off the ground and fiber. Uh, we've gone into the crafting menu. We've made some basic tools. We've leveled up our blueprints. Uh, we've made a, a wood rag torch. We've built a shelter and put a bed down. And that's it. That's all we need to do. That's the first day in Icarus. So you've had a, a bit of a experience of hunting, gathering and crafting um, and base building. And, and that's it. We can now go back to our ship and we can take off. Now, we cannot take anything with us. As long as a workshop item that was from the loadout, as long as that is in our inventory or our dropship cargo. So if we can see it on this screen, we will take it back with us. If it is not here, i.e. if you've left it on a dead body on the planet or you've left it in a crate or something, you can't take it with you. So just bear that in mind. Um, if we want to return to the station, we click here and that's it. But everything will be um, deleted and it will end the current the current claim to this drop mission complete that's it ladies and gentlemen that's all you need to do for the first mission all right so we can go ahead and click continue we made 25 uh, ren as a result of that it took us about half an hour a little bit longer because we had that introduction as well and we're now level three so now on our character selection, we can click on our character. We can go to the workshop. We can now start to unlock things. We don't actually have enough to be able to do that at the moment, but you'll be able to see once we have, we can do these things. And 
a backpack for example this will give us plus five movement speed plus six inventory slots um, and a few other bonuses so i do recommend when you're in a position to unlocking the survival backpack and the first module which is going to give you another plus five movement speed also it's worth going through some of the talents and looking at those um, but in terms of the missions this is now complete we're one of 62 and you can see this now has a tick meaning we've completed it we can go back in if we want to, to Icarus, friend. we've already done it so we don't need to do that but it's now opened up mission two and we're going to do that in the next video so that's it for this video join us in the next one and we'll go through mission two but thanks for joining us hope you enjoy this series and i will speak to you again soon take care bye, -bye.